Grin from Hallowed Be Thy Game, and today I'm going to share with you games that need to come west. Let's check it out. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Hallowed Be Thy Game and just like any good Switch JRPG YouTuber, I'm out here port bagging, but more specifically, these are the games that I think absolutely need to have a resurgence and be ported west, especially to the Switch. The JRPG genre, I believe, has gained so much traction in recent years that the market is much more sustainable than it was maybe 15, 20 years ago. And with that, there are so many games that just never saw the light of day in the West that have since had just these incredible fan campaigns to translate and localize them. But honestly, to the average consumer, that is just, you know, being able to download a fan patch and run a game is just completely just not viable. So these are the games that I believe need to have an official localization and physical release in the West. There is a wide range of mostly JRPGs here, but they cover a wide range of gameplay. So I'm excited to share these. And in a few cases, I wanna share and give credit to people who help put these games on my radar. But if you enjoy these types of videos and you like the content you're seeing, please consider liking and subscribing. It may seem like such a small, minute thing, but it truly can help change the future of the channel. And I wanna thank everybody so much for all the support. And I would love to know, is there a game out there that never came west that you are very envious and wanna play? Let me know in the comments. But without further ado, let's get started. Now coming up first on today's list is a game and a couple of games that I've actually covered before in the past, but we have CL No Surge in kind of a double pack with R No Surge, Ode to an Unborn Star, um, this is a game that is actually already released and kind of ported to the Switch, but in Japan. Now, Arno Surge has an amazing Western localization, which is extremely odd that they haven't at least brought it over to the West. However, CL No Surge is the one I'm really wanting to talk about. This would be fantastic to have an official localization and bring this sucker to the West. I love Arno Surge so much. Now, I know Artanelico has a lot of diehard fans that are very upset I haven't played Ar the Artanelico games. I would love to play them. However, CL No Search is a prequel to this, and it's one that I just am so entranced by. I had so much fun with R No Search, a truly hidden gem with just an incredible cast of characters. I mean, you bring out friggin' Vash the Stampede to voice the main character, heck yeah, I'm in. Anyways, I love these games. They have a really weird, unique battle system, and uh, I would love to see if R CL No Search kind of follows in the same gameplay style of R No Search. I really don't know much outside of that, but I would be there day one for this. Oh my God, fantastic music, incredible character illustrations. I'm all in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and share one of my most desired games that I've just, oh, I'm so ashamed I didn't know about this, but now that I have, I've, I have downloaded the fan translation for this one. I'm excited to jump in. Oh my gosh. Anyways, Super Robot Tyson, OG Saga, Endless Frontier, Exceed. Oh my gosh, you guys, uh, for a long time viewers of the channel, you know how absolutely cuckoo bananas I am for this game. Freaking Cosmos, battle system just for days, Monolith Soft needs to be stopped. They can't keep creating these absolute bangers and then just let them languish in obscurity. Monolith Soft has just been, a, they're just a goaded developer. I believe their expertise have just brought so much worth and value for Nintendo. I genuinely believe they're the best Nintendo developer right now. This series is fantastic, and it, for anybody who's played like the Project Cross Zone games and everything, you'll know how fun these are. Now, I was tempted to throw in the Namco X uh, mashup. I believe it was on PS2. I've always heard a lot about it. I'm wanting to dive into that one if I can find a fan translation and play that. However, this game is just fantastic. You have some of the absolute best pixel art you're ever gonna see. There's a ton of fan service in there, so for everybody who hates my guts, go ahead and hate me. I'm just a well of fan service here. If I wasn't already knee deep into Etrian Odyssey collection right now, I would already be here, but this is absolutely gonna be one that I complete this year. I love the first in this series, and it is a crime against nature that this never came west. Uh, it needs official localization, a double pack mashup, 
I, I, I will shill this game for days. Please, Monolith Soft, work your magic. Somebody bring this to the West. Now, not straying too far from old Monolith Soft here, we have Xenosaga 1 and 2, the DS games. These are ones that have always intrigued me, and I am kind of morbidly curious because I have played the original Xenosaga trilogy on the PS2, but this is like a reimagining and retelling of the first two games. I am absolutely intoxicated by the graphic art style to this. I want to have this in my hands. I want to play it. I would love to be able to have played it on the original DS and have that form factor experience. Oh my gosh, what might have been, please. Anyways, I think what we can best hope for at this point is just for the original trilogy to get a HD remaster port. I would love that, but I'm not gonna lie, it would be excellent if they do remaster the trilogy, if they throw in one of the biggest W's of all time and localize and put this on as like extra bonus content. I, I'm asking for too much. Now I want to give a big old shout out to at Vengeful Magus over on Twitter. When I put out the tweet just kind of drawing interest of what people were interested in, they brought to my attention, because I had long since forgotten about it, Soma Bringer. This is so wild and baffling. It is, again, Monolith Soft. What the heck? Oh my gosh, too much power in one company. You have essentially like Chrono Trigger and Sephiroth teaming up to go friggin' do an action RPG adventure. This is just baffling how gorgeous, crisp, and just quality this looks, I swear. The DS is a goldmine of some of the absolute friggin' best games you've never heard of. And um, I, my heart, as time goes on, is retracting back. Uh, you know, I fear one day I'm just going to just peace out and be like, all right, have fun, gaming industry. I'm headed back home. But the DS is just a goldmine of content, and it is saddens me just how much incredible games were on the DS but just never made it west. And Soma Bringer is just weird to me because I feel with like the Kingdom Hearts hype and just the growing genre at that time that this could have found some traction even then. Anyways, this is just a gloriously beautiful game that I'm going to do my best to get a fan translation of and play because I, there's no other way at this point and really let's be real this is never coming back and uh yeah for anybody who can't do a fan translation of this they just have to learn japanese and that really bites because this looks fantastic and once again monolith soft what the heck now you're gonna have to forgive me i'm gonna be squeezing two games together here because i am so saddened by the fact that metal max is never going to be big in the west i just have to accept it I hate to even speak it, but these games have been around for like 30 years and they've never taken off in the West. For longtime viewers of the channel, you know how much I freaking love Metal Max Xeno for the PS4. What a crazy exclusive PS4 game. That sucker's not even on Steam. Fantastic, banging, weird turn based JRPG. And I also even love the reimagining of it with Xeno Reborn. However, I am so saddened by the fact that my beloved DS and 3DS will never know what it's like to play Metal Max 2 and Metal Max 4. Oh, okay, these games are, if you've never seen or played a Metal Max game, imagine Mad Max, but with like a weird acid trip, because you're gonna be fighting like giant sunflowers with like laser cannons or like fr or friggin' dinosaurs just strapped with like tactical surface nukes, it's just, bananas it's weird it's off the top you got like motorcycle girls you got people turning in it's just look look it's a weird acid trip however that's what i'm all about and to me metal max is just gorgeous i just recently picked up a new entry that i'm hoping to talk about in the future however i'm just sad that metal max 2 and 4 are just just lost to time essentially in the west and uh, what's sad is they appear to be extremely rare even in Japan. I mean, Metal Max 4, a complete in box copy, can go upwards of 400 or so dollars in Japan. I mean, that's like, for me and my research, that's pretty freaking rare to see a game that just can be that expensive even in Japan. Anyways, I'm really sad I will never be able to play these games. I love this series, I love this franchise, and I would love to have seen it come west um, there's not even fan translations of Metal Max 4. I know they're working on it right now. I'm following the, the dev team on that, or I think it's just a single dude. But, like, who knows? I'm hopeful 
that even with a video like this, I mean, it's I, it, we're a small channel here, but I'm hoping the ball can start rolling. More fans and interest can come, and smart people who know Japanese can give us a fan translation at the very least. Now, I want to give a big old shout out to Sega Blocks over on Twitter. I'm excellent dude. I love that guy. And he actually shouted out two games I wanted to talk about as well. We have Dragon Quest 10 offline. My, my roots are in MMOs. I played World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy online for like, you know, almost two decades. Okay. I'm a little embarrassed to admit that. It's crazy to me that Dragon Quest has an MMO type experience, but how cool would it be to be able to play that offline? I think that's why I've gravitated so much to the Xenoblade games over time because they almost feel like an, a single player MMO type world and structure. I'd be all over Dragon Quest X offline. And I'm very sad, you know how much I love the 3DS. Why couldn't Dragon Quest XI have just made it to the West on the 3DS? I mean, I love the Super Nintendo type 16-bit graphic style that they, they did with the 11S port of the game, but the 3DS is where my heart and soul is at. I would love to have, and that's like an exclusive version of the game, and that's just mind-boggling to me. It would be so excellent to be able to play that. I would 100% play that game again, start to finish, if I could do it on the 3DS, because you know, my, my I'm kind of getting homesick for the 3DS. I'm gonna have to be busting it out here soon. Seventh Dragon 2020 and its sequel, Seventh Dragon 2022. These games just are on the PSP. They look and play just like the 3DS ver uh, the 3DS entry with Seventh Dragon 3. And I'm telling you, look, I'm playing through Etrian Odyssey right now. And the ability to create your own goaded god tier party, choose the way they look, name them, the level of autonomy in that, maybe it plays into my MMO roots and just like creating your own story and characters, but I cannot get enough of it. The combat is excellent. The music in the Seventh Dragon games is some of the best in JRPGs. It is just so underrated and it's criminal, it's not more popular. And Shira Miwa does the god tier art for this. I cannot tell you. I, he is easily one of my favorite character designers in JRPGs. All of it is there. And the fact that we only got the third entry in the States is a shame. I mean, really, I think at this point, Seventh Dragon needs to have as many ravenous diehard fans for it as we have for other great series. And yes, I think this can stand toe to toe with some of the absolute best and most beloved JRPGs of modern days. And if you talk to anybody who's played Seven Dragon, they're going to tell you the same. Now, there are fan translations of this. Thank you, Danik, so much for getting me set up on the Steam Deck with those. But I'm telling you, these are just top of the mountain for me. And I, my hope is, is that one day we could see localizations of these and also a triple pack of the three games and heck, Let's keep this series going because this is a game series that Sega is sitting on that is a gold mine of just quality. Anyways, there you have it. Those are the games that should have come west, gosh darn it. I, I hope you enjoy this type of video. I, I'm looking forward to seeing your games in the comments that you wish had come west. I always learn or remember just some far forgotten knowledge. And um, yeah, I'm hopeful that uh, some of the games you recommend have fan translations so I can check them out. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more JRPG content. I wanna thank the channel members and patrons for your continued support. You're the real MVPs and I can't thank you enough. I wish you all the best and I'll see you next time.